sing a worried song I'm worried now but I won't be worried long Hi there, have you ever wondered what you call your kinfolk that dig for coal? And of course we're referring to the relative minor. So in today's lesson, not that lesson, this lesson, we'll be talking about the relative minor. Just what is it and where is it used? Let's begin in the people's key, the key of G. Here are the notes in the G major scale. And here are the notes in the E natural minor scale. The only difference is you just orient your scale either from G to G or from E to E. Still the same notes, just with a different orientation. Because the two scales share all the same notes, that gives you one reason why we call it relative. Another reason is if you take the notes of a G chord, you have G, B, and D. And you take the notes of an E minor chord, you have E, G, and B. So you have two of the three notes the same, very close. The two chords even sound close. Let's apply the concept to extended chords here is an E minor 7, and if you compare those notes to a G6 chord, you have all of the same notes, just with a different orientation, a different root, but you still have the same notes. One more reason why we call it the relative minor. One way to rote memorize any relative minor chord is to get out your circle of fifths. That chord on the inner circle is the relative minor. So you can see by going down to E, you move inside the circle and you have a C-sharp minor. The relative minor chord can always be found as the sixth scale degree of any major scale. So in the key of C, count up to the note A, build your chord and you'll have your relative minor. A tip for finding the relative minor on your instrument is to figure out what key you want to play in. In this case on my mandolin I'm playing a D chord and I want to find the relative minor. I take the D root which is on the seventh fret of the fourth string and I move it down three half steps. One, two, three. So I go from D to C sharp to C to B. So B will be my relative minor. It's true on any instrument. Move down three half steps from the root and you'll find your relative minor. This technique of finding the relative minor is very useful when playing with the bluegrass players that like to play in B flat and B. So on B flat, down three half steps, you find a G, so G minor will be your chord. In the key of B it'll be G sharp minor. One of the most common uses of the relative minor chord is that of what's called a chord substitution. A chord substitution is where you play a different chord but still support the same melody note. In the example of Worried Man Blues at the beginning of the video, it's in the key of C. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. The melody note is C. The actual recording stays on a C chord song, but in my substitution I went to A minor song. All of these songs were written with just three chords, the one, four, and five chord of each key, but you often hear them with the relative minor chord substitution, such as in Amazing Grace on the last line, was blind but now I see. That's with the regular chords, but I could go. Was blind, but now I see. So just use it where it's appropriate. Make sure everybody else is tuned in that you're doing that so you can play it together. It's important to learn to recognize the sound of the relative minor dropping in there. 
There was a whole genre of songs from the oldies but goodies era where the second chord was the relative minor. It just tends to make your songs a little more interesting, especially if you've been doing a lot of songs that only have one, four, five chords. Take John Denver's Country Roads. Country roads take me home to the place. He certainly could have gone back to G. Place. But he went to E minor. To the place I belong. I hope you found this to be an enlightening discussion on the theory of relativity. No, not that one. This one. There's just a minor difference.